Good morning everyone, it's Brenda Quintana here and I have another treat bag project for you today as promised. Last week I did a treat bag holder with the heart felt bundle and I did one with the butterfly punch, the duet butterfly punch. And this week I have uh, one with the daisy punches and so I thought it would be fun to share how you can do it with different punches. Um, there's just always slight tweaks when you do things because of the punches. So I've changed um, one of the measurements around a little bit to make it fit for the daisy punch. And um, of course I have another project sheet for you which will go on the mail um, tomorrow. Can't believe it's Friday already. This week has gone by so quickly. And um, so that will go out in the mail uh, for all my email list subscribers. And if you look below in um, the description of this video, you will find a link to subscribe to my email list. If you're not already subscribed, if you're already subscribed, you're good. Um, some people have trouble finding it. Um, and the reason they have trouble finding my link is because they're the description only shows so much so you have to click on the more button so it fully opens up so you can see everything that's down below so if you have trouble finding that link it's probably because it's like down below and you just need to click on the more button so it becomes visible okay well um well, let me show you the treat bag um so it's this little treat bag right here and i use the larger daisy punch to create this kind of window behind and then the medium daisy punch is on the front of the bag to kind of um, well to give it a little pizzazz and of course you can see the um, kisses on the side I have bent over my cellophane bag but you can also cut off right at the top um, I'm using the printed gusset cellophane bags. They are quite long, but you could also use the regular three by six cellophane bags. They fit this design as well. And if for some reason uh, the other ones go on back order, you can definitely use these. What you might want to do in that case, because the printed ones have like this nice little design that floats over top, you might want to do maybe emboss the front or um, do a little bit of light stamping. I would either do tone on tone stamping so you don't take away from the daisy on the front or it maybe even use um, a white craft ink to stamp some little images or dots or whatever on the front um, if you want to mimic that without having the three by six um, without having that printed um, cellophane bags so anyway and then you can make them in different colors so um, I, I always like to do that make them in different colors because I'm always thinking that um, someone might be giving these to a group of people or if you're just giving it to one person you can definitely do it in their favorite color because that would make a lot of sense all right, uh, I have a few of you on here. Good morning, Luann. I'm so glad that you're here. And I see there's a few more people that haven't commented. And you don't have to comment ever. And I'm so glad you're here anyway. Um, if you have comments after my live, please post them down below um, because I will get to them. Okay, let me switch my cameras up right here. So um, I also didn't share this one. This one's my um, one that I did in Melon Mambo. So this one was Gorgeous Grape. Um, I have Daffodil Delight and then Melon Mambo. And I don't know what color I'm going to do this morning. The nice thing is all I have to do, I cut everything. I use the same base color for the bag. So all I have to do is switch up my ink so it makes it very easy to you know choose a blue cardstock choose a white cardstock and then just kind of build it from there um so let me just show you a couple of things i'm using the daisy lane bundle which has the daisy lane stamp set in it and the medium daisy punch 
So that is one item. I'm also using the regular Daisy Punch. Now, if you don't have any of these products and you want to purchase them, this bundle in the US is $35 and this punch is $18. So if you get all of these, you're going to hit um, around $53, I believe. So you qualify for a celebration product when you do that. So celebration is um, our, a rewards time stamping up between January and March. And so right now we're in 2020. And so you can choose a reward stamp set. We've got the Gangs All Mirror. We've got um, this uh, stamp set called Lovely Lily Pad for $50. You can choose this beautiful designer series paper, the Lily Impressions designer paper or some sequins. So there's lots of different things. There's a happy birthday to you stamp set. So there's a lot of reward things that you get if you choose that. Also, I wanted to mention, since I haven't shown this on camera yet, um, my tutorial for the month is this cute little rainbow box. And I've put like Skittles inside of here, but you can put whatever you want. You could put M&Ms if you wanted to continue on the rainbow theme. Um, you could put another type of candy in there or a, a small gift. So um, when you um, purchase from me, if you spend at least $15, you can choose one of my paid tutorials for free. And this is the one I have for this month, but you can choose whatever one you want. I give you your choice and I've got, I don't know how many I have now. It's over 50 different tutorials. I have a lot of my popular Hershey's Kisses ones, um, but I thought the rainbow one would be cute as a St. Patrick's Day one, or you could do it, um, like there's a lot of rainbow theme things like, um, you know, that, you know, just, just different ways to use this. You could use it as a birthday gift, a thank you gift, a get well gift. So it's just a nice little box to have. Good morning, everyone who's joined me. Thank you, I'm glad you like the box. That's not what I'm gonna show you how to make today, the rainbow box, but I just wanted to show you that you could get that free if you spend um, money with me. I have um, uh, a host code down below that you can use if your order's under $150. Um, and if it's over $150, don't use the host code. Um, you will, um, get the tutorial. You'll also get my um, gift for the month and I've just drawn a complete blank on what it is. Oh no, no, I know what it is. It's this beautiful ribbon. Um, so if you spend $75 with me this month, you're going to get a roll of this beautiful ribbon. And I, the reason I chose this one because it goes so nicely with the paper, this um, Lily Impressions Designer Series paper, and I thought people would find that really useful. And I like that it's got pretty peacock on one side and old olive on the other side. It's just very pretty and it ties really nicely. So that's my little gift for the month. Okay, sorry, I blabbed too much. Let's get on to the project now that you know kind of what the key supplies are. And of course, the other thing that you'll need is some cellophane bags. So you can either choose to get the gusseted cellophane bags or you can you the gusseted cellophane bags or the printed gusseted, 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 oh my God, gusseted cellophane bags. That is like a long, long title for these bags. Okay, so to start off with, you're going to need a piece of bash, not bashful, let me grab my um, my sheet. I need help with the names, the balmy blue cardstock. And I need to grab my, my scoring board, which I had way over on the other side of the room. Let me take these little markers off. And I need a stylus. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna create the base of the bag first. And so you'll need a piece of cardstock that is six and five eighths by two and seven eighths. And I changed up this measurement, so take note if you have my other um, treat bags or, or if you've made the other treat bags, I've shortened it a little bit because the daisy punch doesn't reach as far and if this tab is too big over on this side, then um, it will show through. So that's why I shortened this side just a little bit. 
So then you're going to score, take the long side and score at the four and a quarter inch mark and the six and a quarter inch mark. Set that aside for a moment. And then um, we're gonna fold along the score lines and get it ready for the next piece. So that's the back and bottom of the bag. And then we're going to need another piece of cardstock. Is this is balmy blue as well, and this one measures two and seven eighths by four and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna grab my daisy punch. So this is the bigger of the two daisy punches. I'm just gonna slide this in on one of the short sides, and make sure it's in all the way, and then give it a punch. If you have trouble punching this one, make sure it's in all the way, centered from side to side, and then punch it while it's down on the surface. Just make sure you hold it here so it doesn't, the paper or the cardstock doesn't slide out. All right. Then we're going to reserve this little piece instead of throwing it away. Try to find a spot for my punch. And I thought it would look good if we kind of had it in the background. So you can't glue the center down because there's nothing to glue down there. But what you can do is put, all right, my Tombow is clogged again. Yeah, I know this bottle's almost done and I keep leaving it open for long periods of time and that's not good. Okay, now it's really freely flowing. There. I think it's like built up pressure and now it's like, it's like a volcano. All right, you know what? I'm gonna let that one sit for a bit and I'm gonna grab a new bottle. Um, if you're not using your Tombow for a little while, it's a good idea to close it up. And I've been really bad about with this particular bottle. I've been like doing stuff, leaving it open, and it's that's why it's kind of acting funny. So let me start with a new bottle. And um, I'm gonna add just a little dot to right here, like right where these pieces come up to meet the center. And that's gonna help anchor this piece. So I'm going to shift it and just add it on to here. This will give it a nice little backdrop for my daisy that will be on the front. And I'm trying to follow along on my project sheet because I do sometimes jump ahead and that's not good. All right, so now we can bring this piece in and this little tab on the front. I'm gonna add some Tombow there. And so if I would, if I have the original measurements that I started off with the other treat bags, um, it would show right here on the tip a little bit. So that's why I shortened the measurement just a bit so that it doesn't show through. Cause I, I do want this to kind of act as a window. So when you see it from the front, you can see that there's some candy on the inside. It, it makes for a really nice display. Then I'm going to grab this aside for a moment. One of the gusset cellophane bags and you can just open that up. And then I just kind of slide it in flat cause it's easier. And then you're gonna bring this down to the bottom. Make sure it's all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna bend this piece back down here on the bottom. And let me bring in some tape, some just a little piece of tape. I'm gonna tape both ends of that down. It's just regular clear tape. I'm sure you have some on hand. Or you can use Terran tape to put that down as well. Um, I just find this is really easier. And since no one's really going to be looking at the bottom, having two pieces of tape on the bottom isn't going to matter so much. So then this is all the way in. And then I'm using Hershey's Kisses, but trust me, there are so many different candies you can put in, in there. 
I just always have a lot of kisses on hand because I, I do a lot of Hershey's Kisses design, so it's just easier for me to do it. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, um, fourteen, fifteen. I'll probably put about fifteen kisses in here. So, um, kisses are also um, a nice candy price wise to put in, in a bag and they usually make people smile and you can get them in different flavors too. So then I'm just going to fold this over and just set it aside for a moment and then we'll deal with it in a second. We're going to t make a little topper now and this piece measures three inches by two inches. And I am just going to take this piece and put the short side up at the top and score at the one inch mark. And I think, I'm trying to think, I want like a springy type color and I've got a pink, I've got a yellow, and I've got a purple. Um, blue, it's hard to do a blue with a blue background. Green, not such a great flower color. So I think I'm gonna use, should I use Calypso Coral? Let's use Calypso Coral and see how that looks. I hope my Calypso Coral pad is inky enough. If it's not, I'll choose maybe a different color. Oh yeah, I think it might be inky enough. Calypso Coral, oh! And I'm stamping, okay, I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing the flower and I'm not stamping the topper. Let's set that aside for a second. Um, let's do the topper first. Let's do it in order of my project sheet, sorry. Oh shoot, let me just move this phone aside. Sorry, I usually put my phone over on time out in the other room and close the door. And I didn't this morning, and I've been getting spam calls this morning. I know they're spam because they have um, our phone system filters out some um, calls, and it doesn't. It they just ring once and then they go away. And uh, so that's the second one that I've gotten this morning. So um, I'm glad they're being filtered out, but it's annoying in the video. All right, so I'm just I'm choosing the word smile. Uh, friend is also a nice word and it's a similar size so you could choose either one of those for the front this is um, directly from the Daisy Lane snap set and you know what I did one thing that I um, I need to remedy first um, I need to punch the corners using the detail trio punch I'm going to corner around all of these corners It just gives it a nicer look and I just totally forgot about that but you can do it after the fact too then I'm going to take a little scrap piece of paper and protect my work surface and I'm going to take this little daisy it's not the one that matches the punch but it's the another daisy that has the full petals on it I'm going to take it ink it up and stamp it off once and then I'm gonna stamp it down here on the corner it will just be a little lighter than the word smile ink this up stamp it off and then I'm gonna add it up top here and I don't mind that the stamps onto the back if you don't want it to stamp on the back then just make sure you fold it over first and then um, it will just stamp on the front. But I don't mind that it flips over to the back. It's like the continuation of the flower. Okay, so then we'll leave that ink pad there because I'll need it in a second. So come in and I'm going to just make sure the gussets look nice. The candy looks nice. I'm going to fold over this and then put my little topper on top and then just grab one of these little clips and then clip it right on to the top. So it's already looking cute but it's going to look even cuter once we stamp that little daisy and put it on the front. So now we'll stamp the daisy and you need two of these. 
full strength. And then grab my medium daisy punch. That's the smaller of the two punches. And just make sure they're centered nicely. And I'm a little nitpicky. I don't know if it makes a difference in the end as to whether they're centered better or not. And then I'll bring my Tombow back in put a little dot in the center and then we'll bring these two together and they'll overlap just a little bit and if you want you can while you're making sure to twist this the right way you can bend up the petals just a little bit with your fingers and just create a little dimension and then you'll take a dimensional or a mini dimensional uh, this has got a big base so I used a regular dimensional but if you just have the mini ones use a mini one it won't matter and then remove the backing and then you can add this to the front of your piece and then just one more thing, and I know I have them somewhere. There they are. I've got these clear faceted gems, and I'm just gonna use one of them. Let me match up. Okay, wanna make sure I use the same size as I use for the other ones, because again, I like to be, oh, I left the backing on there. So this is why you probably wanna use a tool to remove your um, your uh, jewels and your little gems because that way you can get the backing off and not just the top and then just give that little press and there it is so another easy project using kind of the same supplies let me move this aside get these off camera and let me bring in all of these treat bags just to show you how pretty they look aren't those great Let me bring them down into the camera a little bit more that goes off to the side and there's all the little treat bags so are they pretty in all those different colors and I think again it looks nice with the different displays that you can create with different colors and there's a few more shades that you can bring in here like if you have all the ink pads make one in flirty flamingo make one in poppy parade and Helen Heather you make a whole rainbow of colors for all of these so it makes it pretty cool um, to be able to do that let me switch back over to all of you guys. Hello, hello. Um, let me see if there were any questions along the way. Oh my gosh, it's snowing for someone, for Kathy in New York. I'm sorry about that. Um, today, for the past two days, it has been raining here. Um, so normally we get a lot of snow in February here in the Boston area, and we've gotten a lot of rain. And I'm not complaining because I... You know, I like snow when I don't have to do a lot of stuff and I can stay home, um, but it does require me to shovel, so that's kind of a time suck. Um, so I, I actually don't mind the rain um, right now, but I'm looking forward to the weekend with no rain. Let me see what else oh, we've got going on. Um, oh, okay. Luann has a tip for me. I'm going to read this. She said, if you open up the other end of the tombow, air can enter and relieve the pressure. Good idea. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, I'm going to do that, Luann. My volcanic um, erupting. Um, so let me do this first. Let me open up this end here. Okay. And then let me see what happened on this end because I yeah you know the pressure was just kind of and it's still kind of going maybe it's because this end has never ever been used I've never used the opposite end 
So let's do this. Let me create the hole here. Let's see if that stops the eruption process. Yeah, it did. It stopped it. But I had to poke a hole in the bottom to kind of to get it to go, um, to get it the air through because I guess over time the air, a hole was covered. So oh, very cool. I learned something new. See, that's why I love this because I, you know, I certainly I've been stamping for a long time, but I do not know it all. And I did not know that tip. And it's this has happened to me a couple of times. It doesn't happen very often. Tombow is my favorite go to glue for 3D designing because it holds things together well, um, like no other um, adhesive can. And I since I do a lot of 3D designing, I just use it a lot. I use it even to assemble cards and stuff. I just got used to using it. Um, so yeah, that's a really good tip. Thank you so much for that. Um, now I know I can I can share that in the future uh, with other people. Yay, thank you. All right, so let's see. Oh, it's 30 in Ontario. And I'm, I'm sure you mean um, like Fahrenheit because um, but, but you should be in Celsius. Um, so it, it's, uh, uh, what, minus one, um, Janice? If I can translate, look, can you see my little, oh, right there, Canadian flag in the background. Um, so I am a Canadian, but I live in, and, and I'm a US demonstrator. So um, there, I'm, pretty soon I'm gonna have to get an American one up there um, this summer to add to my collection. Um, okay, let me see if there's anything. You don't have to shovel rain. That's right, I'm not shoveling the rain. <laughs> In fact, it started off as snow yesterday, kind of like a icy snow, and I didn't have to go anywhere. My husband is um, uh, away on a business trip and no one had to go anywhere, so I didn't go out there and do anything with it yesterday because then it turned to rain and it kind of melted the snow and I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna waste my time shoveling that um, stuff. Okay. Oh, okay, and Janice asked a question about the other end of the Tombow. I don't get how to use it. Do we use it? I don't personally use it, but I do know people that use it. I, I should try using it at some point. I think it's if you have a bigger area and you wanna spread like um, a fine area of glue where did it go so like it's got kind of this wedge so you can kind of scrape I should start using it that's a good question but I'll have to experiment first before I like um, do something really silly on camera and see how it goes because that might be a good way to you know when you get too much Tombow on an area and you kind of want to squeegee it down so it's not this big drop that squishes out this might be like the solution for that so we'll have to see. I'm, I'm going to have to experiment with that. I should know how to use the other end because I just never use it. Okay. Uh, oh, and Luann has a, an answer. She says, you can use the other end if you have a large area to color, kind of like using a glue stick. Huh. Luann knows her uh, Tombow uh, glue. Uh, so, okay. And um, Vera Blue says that the flags, bags are really cute. Uh, Oh, oh my gosh, she said minus 30 Celsius? Where are you? Oh, I didn't see the minus. Oh, good. it is. Where? Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to look that up. Shunaya, Ontario. That must be like way up north. Oh my gosh. That's like, ugh. That's really sad. Okay. Um, I'm going up to visit our son in uh, a week, uh, a week from today. He's studying at the University of Waterloo in Canada. And so I'm sure it's not going to be um, as warm as it is in Boston. Not that Boston's particularly warm, but I know it's a few degrees colder when I look at the weather. So um, not really the best time of year to go, but he's got um, a reading week coming up. So I'm heading up there to... Um, to visit him and to spend a little time with him at the just the beginning of his reading week and just to get a chance to see him. 
um, because uh, yeah, he's he does co-op and so he will be on work term this summer and I don't think he's coming home to Boston. So I need to take every advantage or chance to see him because um, it's like, wow, it's like empty nester city here. Um, anyway, I, I feel for you and, and your your cold, cold weather. That's that's crazy, Janice. Um, all right. Thank you, Jane. I'm glad you like the bags. <laughs> yeah. Luann did the calculation. That's 22. Oh, she said minus 22 Fahrenheit is the um, the the calculation. Yikes. That is that is very, very cold. All right, guys. Well, I'm so glad you joined me and um, I want to switch. I think I'm going to start with Easter next week and do some Easter designs. So um, I think I've done enough with these treat bags. You can definitely see how you can use them with your punches and um, um, you know, maybe make some small adjustments to create those uh, bags. And now we'll switch over to some Easter designs so that um, you can have plenty of time to make things for Easter. Yay. All right, guys, I hope you have a great weekend and look for my project sheet tomorrow. Make sure that you add my email address to your um, um, address book that helps uh, with the delivery sometimes because it is a link to a PDF that comes through I know some people are not um, getting it the way that they should and that's um, mainly it's your um, it's I'm sending it out but your email provider is blocking it so if you add me to your address book um, pick an email that I sent you recently that wasn't a Saturday email and um, use that email address and put it in your address book and that should help with the delivery. All right guys thanks so much for chatting with me this morning and I will see you back here next week. Bye bye.